Earth is rotating all the time, yes, but so is the aeroplane. Well, then there's no Coriolis okay. deflection at 15 degrees an hour. If they're both rotating at the same rate, then Neil deGrasse was wrong then. So Earth doesn't turn underneath a football at 15 degrees an hour to cause it deflect and go through a goal then. Any of the issues you're talking about. But did, so, why did you start talking through me when I was in the middle of making my example rumpus? Is it because you're scared of us? Because I was in mid-example, and so that you didn't have to listen to it, you started talking through it, so that when I finished, you didn't have to in any way address what I said. You're scared? Well, I'm, about to, I'm about to explain to you what drift is. After you declared that Earth is moving with a plane at the same velocity, I pointed out that that would negate the claim that Neil deGrasse Tyson's made... The Earth turns underneath a football to cause deflection at 15 degrees an hour. You're saying that no, wouldn't occur based on what you've just declared and now you're doing it again so that you don't have to address this, you coward. host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the flat earth debate Multiple thoughts at the same time is just pounding in their head so they just can't come on there every argument's been addressed every argument has been stripped down word by word beaten up delivered to them with a kind word and sometimes not such a kind word because they add home to begin with and then next thing you know I can't go on that show. My head hurts. <laughs> uh, I've dressed another... and stripped down. I think it's uh, it's the new format. They have ballers. They're scared to come into the meat room and talk their usual tripe. Oh, <laughs> nice one. Nice one. The Adam Meekin. His tenth, he inspires you. <laughs> you know, at the point in the day, I think of puns all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got well, that because I'm Italian. We know about tripe. Well, Nathan's got the best line now. He's going to tear a strip off of them. Oh, boom, boom. No, I'm not. I'm actually going to do a quick shout out. So somebody's actually hit my GoFundMe campaign. So Rob Hunston, shout out to you, my friend. Massive thank you for supporting my GoFundMe campaign. Just noticed while I was uh, fiddling around in the background. Thank you very much. Give us a give you a chance for a plug there, then, Nate, because I don't know it. What what's this one? Oh, uh, it's a very modest one. It's not going to be a big campaign. So for the last nine months, I've been treating my room. I'm sure you have heard me talking about treating the <laughs> studio, right? Yeah. No, absolutely not. Tell us more <laughs> about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's this treating you speak of? Uh, so. I've been treating the room acoustically and I've basically been working to a set plan. You can okay. the, the amazing thing about acoustic treatment is that the people involved are really humble people and they're more than willing to just offer up all of their information for nothing. And they don't expect anything back in return. And I think it's because it's such a small industry. They can't really be backbiting and you know anti-competitive or any of that sort of thing. They've got to just be forthright, tell you what, what's what, and sort of cut through the charlatanism that is in some way involved in the industry. Um, but anyway, it means that there, there's a, one of the tools available was this thing called AMROC. It's a room mode calculator. You plug in your room dimensions. You say, what do you want to treat for? So you can treat all the way up to professional studios that are, that are at mixing level, in which case like 100% of the room is covered. And you can pick anything in between from that to just somebody who wants to listen to a bit of music now i just set it to speech or voice i forget what the category was called looked at the requirements worked out the coefficients it pretty much gives it you all anyway and then set about doing it and i'm now 80 percent there but the order that it did in was based on this guy called yesco so the guy's got a channel called acoustics insider and while a lot of the acousticians will show their wonderful way of measuring it with complicated mics and software like Room EQ Wizard, this guy was like, nah, don't do that. You won't know how to interpret it. If you just stick a mic in a room, measure it, you're not going to be able to interpret the results and say, this is what I should do. So just here's your basic plan. Go forth doing that. And once you're mostly there, you can then start measuring. So that's what I've done. Anyway, it doesn't change the fact that I pretty much knew what I'd got to get anyway. 
And then <laughs> I've over nine months been buying one or two panels from a, a company that actually physically makes them and has done so during the lockdown. So at the beginning of the process, I was like, I want to buy more stuff from local manufacturers and not just order stuff on Amazon, like maybe upgrade the mic with my Patreon funds or maybe upgrade the camera. And you just go on Amazon, right? And you just order whatever's the cheapest. And if you don't like it, you send it back, all that convenience. I didn't want that. I wanted to go to somebody who's physically going to be making something while we're locked down, i.e. a manufacturing process that's still taking place while the lockdown's going on. And that ended up being GIK Acoustics and getting them to physically make panels. Now, could I make them? Well, probably badly with a lot more time and they'd end up being a lot worse. But for maybe £100 at a time or £200 at a time, you know, from my Patreon funds, I've kept putting the money in each month to, to slowly treat the room. Nine months later, number one, I'm a bit sick of it. Number two, <laughs> my alternator went. So today, after this broadcasting, I have to hand over 500 quid to a, to a garage for fitting a new one, which I know will put a halt to treating the studio. Now, I do. I want to get it done, and I want to move on to other things. I don't want to stop, especially as we are actually locked down at the moment, um, doing what I've been doing month on month on month, which is just putting a little bit more into uh, somebody who's me making something, somebody who's keeping people employed and keeping food on their table that's working from the UK. Um, I want to do it this month as well as I did last month, and I can't because of other things I've had to pay for, which is just, you know, that's unfortunate. But by the same token, I do want to keep the process going, as I have you know, tried so hard to do so up until now um, with Patreon funds. So I just want to you know, buy maybe one panel, and that'll keep me happy. I'll be like, no, throughout the whole of the COVID lockdown, I still managed to inject a bit of money into a, a company that was keeping people in the UK working and making stuff. And that, to me, it might most people probably don't give a crap. But for me, that seems like something I can actually do proactively. Yeah, people go out and they protest and people moan about the things they don't like about the law changes. That isn't me. Me, I think, well, how can I actually affect some individuals at ground level with what I've got? Well, I've got a little bit of money in my pocket each month from Patreon and I can actually buy an item, a thing that someone's going to have to take their hands and graph to make, put it in the post, arrange for a transaction to occur, get the people in the postage service to actually physically bring it to me, keeping them working. You know, it's just a little thing to keep it going. And I want to do that and get it finished as well. So unfortunately, this month, that's beyond my means. And I don't want that to stop it from occurring. And I don't want the process of treating this room to finish. I do want it to actually be, you know, at the concludery point where I can say, no, I've done every step in the process. I've done all of the things it said it should do. And it does react the way I wanted it to. I've finished now I can move on to other things. So there you go. That's why I've set up a little GoFundMe campaign, just to clear a little bit of debt that I've got from PayPal credit, which I accumulated to get a bit of money off postage, as much as I'm saying I want to inject money. I haggled like hell every time I ordered anything. I bet they hate me. I'm probably one of the worst customers you could have ever. But still, you know, I've given them money and, and I've continued to do so and I hope to continue to do so till the project's actually finished, rather than, it going, oh, it's a bit too expensive this month and it's just stopping uh, I just don't want that to happen. I want to actually get to the end. I want to make a proper nice shiny video about it and go, look, this is a finished studio. I'm done. That was me enough waffling about GoFundMe. Support my GoFundMe. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> For the long version, become a Patreon because I've published nothing but for the last nine months. And that's another thing. It will help my Patreons who probably at this point are like, oh, wonderful, a new Patreon video about an acoustic panel. What a shock. <laughs> so if he goes back to some of the older, like real older episodes, like the sound is so much different, so much more different, like it's so much better now. So whatever you're doing, keep it up. Well, it is directly related to that, actually, Chocolate. So when I'm listening to you speak now, there's certain things that I can apply, there's certain compressors I can apply, limiters that I can apply. And when I applied them back in the day or attempted to, the result was always bad. And the reason is simple, because what I'm monitoring has got a load of room noise in it. So you can't really tell whether or not what you've done to the sound has actually improved it until you go back after the fact and monitor it on the recording or play the recording back through the system that you're monitoring it on while you're live. So to get around that, the only thing you can do is try and remove the noise of the room so that what I'm actually hearing of you represents accurately what you actually sound like. So if it's all scratchy and distorted or over compressed or whatever, I can hear it and, and actually adjust it. Now, it might be a tiny adjustment, but often that will make a massive difference to the legibility of what you're saying. 
rather than a load of crackling and distortion. That's going to be the case because often I can't control certain aspects that are coming from your end. But what I can do is make tweaks at this end that actually now make a difference to how legible or, um, what's the word, how clear the audio is to the audience. It's not just affecting me and what goes into my mic. What I hear of you and what I adjust based on what I hear of you in this room now directly affects how the sound comes out to the audience. So, yeah, th that's why I've kept doing it. It's hard to explain that to somebody when they just see a picture of a panel and they're like, so you're making it sound better in your room then, who cares? It's like, no, it doesn't quite work like that. For me to make realistic adjustments, I need to actually hear how it's sounding. And you don't if it's all bouncing around the room and there's a load of reverberation and the decay's hanging around forever. You don't know what you're adjusting. You listen to it now and it's such a difference. It's crazy. I kind of think it sounds better. And then you go back to the recording after it's finished and go, my God, it sounds awful. And it's because you couldn't tell what you were doing when you were doing it, which is a nightmare. But that's what that's what a studio is for, right? That's the whole purpose of a studio. And taking the debate seriously, taking what I do on YouTube seriously, means I A, want to be able to hear what everyone's saying better, and B, want the audience to hear what people are saying better. And the only way to do that is to have a proper studio. And unfortunately for me, that's really, really, really expensive. So, so do you think by going on Google Meets, people can be heard better? Heard? Oh, dear God, yeah, these are getting yeah. worse. <laughs> well, look, in the absence of ballers, come on. Where are Please, you? we need globe proofies. <laughs> I had to think about that one for a second, but I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're not going to. They're not going to comment. I mean, at the moment, they're completely screwed. They've got Earth turning underneath a football, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. While they need to come here and tell us how Earth doesn't turn underneath pendulums and stuff, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing to be a baller, especially on a show that strips you down every time. I mean, I, I, I can't believe they were coming at the rate they were in the past. It was like you're getting beat up every time you come in here. Why do you come in here? Well, the problem, Nathan, is you're too stupid to understand scientific arguments and you're a science denier ah. and a reality denier. Wow. That's the problem. If you don't Speaking understand of, uh, what the arguments are being Mr. presented to, you've got a problem. You can dismiss them. You just simply go on the grounds you don't understand, therefore it's not right. Unfortunately, so, Rump, the rest of us get on Rump, with the high, high technology world and move on and learn stuff, leaving you in our, tr in our wake in, the, in, a, in an environment of ignorance and stupidity. Nervous. Why do you sound so nervous, Rumpus? Rumpus, Rumpus, you're not nervous right. at all. Hang on, Rumpus, is Earth turning? Well, I'm about. No, I'm about to be muted. Airplane. I suppose that might. Be, I have to. I can only get about four or five words before being over talked or muted. So I, I've got to get the words out. Okay, I'm. I'm being very nice and slow with you. So is Earth turning underneath airplanes? The motion of an aeroplane with regard to the Earth's surface I'm not is determined talking about by the its motion velocity. Of the now, let's, listen, the try, so you can't understand. Try listening. The, the rate at which the move, there's a movement between an aeroplane and the Earth is determined by the aeroplane's velocity. That before you go there, you before you go there, on. is Earth turning as you give your example? Does Earth turn as you give your example? Earth is rotating all the time, yes, but so is the aeroplane. Well, then there's no Coriolis okay. deflection at 15 degrees an hour. If they're both rotating at the same rate, then Neil deGrasse was wrong then. So Earth doesn't turn underneath a football at 15 degrees an hour to cause it deflect and go through a goal then. Any of the issues you're talking about. But did, so, why did you start talking through me when I was in the middle of making my example rumpus? Is it because you're scared of us? Because I was in mid-example, and so that you didn't have to listen to it, you started talking through it, so that when I finished... You didn't have to con in any way address what I said. You scared? Well, I'm, about to, I'm about to explain to you what drift is. Well, I was in the middle of asking you, after you declared that Earth is moving with a plane at the same velocity, I pointed out that that would negate the claim that Neil deGrasse Tyson's made, that Earth turns underneath a football to cause deflection at 15 degrees an hour. You're saying that no, wouldn't occur based on what you've just declared and now you're doing it again so that you don't have to address this, you coward? Why is it that you're interrupting the end of my declaration that you are debunking Neil deGrasse Tyson's claim? Does that require constant fundy muting, you coward? He never said that. He never said that. He said the earth turned underneath the goal to cause the ball to deflect and go through the goalposts. That's observable as what's known as Coriolis deflection. From the ground, it looked like the ball curved through the goal because Earth turned underneath it. That's his claim. 
You're saying that's not his claim? Maybe we don't understand? Or maybe just talk through me while I make this claim that Neil deGrasse Tyson's declared quite clearly with 15 degrees now drift, that's Coriolis deflection, that you're now denying, maybe saying we don't understand with constant interruptions. Why are you so cowardly? You didn't quote him, did you? You did not quote what he said. You. It's Coriolis deflection. It's a globe claim. He's claiming it happened with a ball. I don't need to quote him. He's claiming Earth turned underneath to cause a 15 degrees an hour deflection. And that would be observable from the stands as he claims Earth turned under the ball. Now, you're saying they turned together, so you're debunking his claim. You quote him properly, did you? You're just talking through me so you don't have to listen to me. One last chance. If I see your mic moving like it is now while I'm talking, I'm going to kick you out because you're too cowardly to listen to what I'm claiming to respond to it. You're just talking through me. I have heard what you said. No, you didn't. You talked through it. You're debunking Neil deGrasse Tyson's claim that Earth turned under the football. You're saying they turned together. That negates his claim that one drifted as one turned under the other. You're just talking through me constantly, Rumpus. You you Rumpus, you need to be removed. Point. You're not listening to me anymore. It. You're just scared. I must be your nightmare. That's why you sounded so scared. That's why he sounded scared, Chocolate. Because he's terrified to listen to anything I say. He knows he's going to get pummeled. Yeah, I can tell. If he's saying Neil deGrasse Tyson did not say that, he's dead wrong. Well, I put his tweet in Master B if you want to put it on the screen. Sure. We know what Coriolis effect is. It's an effect induced by you turning underneath stuff. Now, he's saying, no, we don't understand. Yeah, we do. It's just debunked because nothing's turning underneath anything. If it was, Earth would be turning underneath a blimp. A 50-yard field goal in the University of Phoenix Stadium deflects. That's not moving together, Rumpus. Deflects. That's moving away from the second reference frame. Do you not understand what Neil deGrasse Tyson means when he says deflects? It's not moving together. That's not deflecting. Of course, he's claiming Earth turns underneath to cause this. Earth's rotation. Deflection based on Earth's rotation underneath the ball. Now, if that was the case, then a blimp filming the football game would have Earth turning underneath it. The blimp would be deflecting at the same rate he's claiming the ball deflects. Obviously, no blimp ever goes up and has Earth turning underneath it. But Rumpus needs to cowardly mute everything I say, talk through every example, so that he can merely claim I'm misrepresenting Mr. deGrasse Tyson's claim. We have deflection. Well, deflection's caused, according to him, by Earth turning under a football. And we have it claimed that Earth turns underneath snipers' bullets. And the Earth turns underneath gyros and pendulums. But that would also mean Earth turns under the blimp filming the game. And Earth turns underneath a helicopter. And Earth turned underneath... I... Anything that leaves the non-inertial claim to be spinning reference frame. So you'd have flights reduced in their time because they'd be travelling west with Earth turning underneath them. Exactly as claimed by Tyson. Now you can be damn sure that Rumpus isn't going to listen to any of this. He needs to fundy mute every word of every claim that his side's making so he can convolute their claim that Earth turns underneath footballs because it would shorten flight times if it was the case and it's very easy to debunk. Much easier to say we don't understand Neil deGrasse Tyson's claim that Earth turned under a football. That's precisely what he's claiming. It just shortens flight times if it's true. It isn't. Earth's not turning underneath anything. Earth is stationary. There is no deflection at 15 degrees an hour, as claimed by NDT. It would shorten flight times if there were. 